video, we're going to switch gears and talk about how we can use LaTeX to create a slideshow. If you open the file beamer.tech, which is included on the Odom website, you will find this file here. And in this case, we're going to use a different document class. If you recall in the last videos, we used the article document class to create an article. Now we're going to use the Beamer document class to create a slideshow. And there are several packages available to make presentation slides in LaTeX. Beamer is probably the most common, and so that's what we'll use today. Most of the commands that we learned in creating the article are all going to apply to creating a slideshow, although there are a few new commands to get used to. So we start with the document class command. We can add packages just as we did before in our preamble. And a very important command that we're going to want in the preamble is the backslash use theme command. And in this case I'm going to type use theme Warsaw. That's a particular Beamer theme that uh, provides the color and shapes and that sort of thing in the slideshow. Now there are plenty of themes available as you can probably guess and there are plenty of websites that show the different Beamer themes. Here's just one that I found by googling Beamer themes and it gives you a, a big matrix of examples and the names of the themes on the left side. So for now we'll, we'll do the Warsaw theme. The next thing you want is the title command and the author command, those are exactly the same as what we saw with the article class. There's also a command called backslash institute where you can put in the, in the name of your institution. And there's a date command as usual. Now after typing begin document, the first thing that you probably want is a frame with the title page. And in uh, the Beamer terminology, a frame is a slide. And so we'll type begin frame and end frame. And in the middle of that, I'm going to type backslash title page. And that produces uh, the, the title slide with the title and name and institution name and date. Now, after that, let's say you would like to have a frame with the table of contents. To do that, you can type begin frame, end frame, and then backslash table of contents in the middle. And so that's going to produce a list of the various sections that are in the Beamer slideshow. Now notice I've got this special section command called outline here. Uh, that just starts the, the sectioning process and um, appears with the table of contents. You can use the section command just as we've seen it with the article class. So here's section introduction. I've got a subsection. That's also permissible. And so all of the section and subsection information will go into the table of contents. So I'm going to compile that so we can see what this looks like. So here's our title frame. It's got the title of our slideshow name, institution, it's got the date, and up here are the various sections in this slideshow. And I'm going to uh, scroll to one, the next slide down. This, down. this is the table of contents slide. We've got various sections and also subsections here. Now the typical frame in a slideshow has some sort of itemized list or bullet points on it. We can create that in Beamer with the itemize command or with the enumerate command as we've already learned. One command that you're going to probably want to get used to is the backslash frame title command and that provides a frame for a particular slide. And then I've got the itemize environment here just like we've seen it before. Now there is a little bit of a twist to this itemize environment. Notice I've got this code here with one, two, three, four, five uh, surrounded by the less than sign and uh, greater than sign. 
This tells LaTeX uh, what, uh, how to uncover or reveal the various items in this slideshow. So for example, with this first bullet point, I'm calling it item number one. This code here with the one and then a dash inside the less than and, and greater than sign tells LaTeX that I want this item to appear at the when this slide first comes up and to stay up through the rest of the time on that slide. The next item down, number two, says this item should appear the second time I click on that slide and stay up through the rest of the slide. And similar here, item number three should stay up or should, should appear on the third click when I'm on that slide and stay up through the rest of that slide. Now number four is a little bit different. Notice I don't have the dash here. So what this means is item number four should pop up on the fourth click, but then when I click a fifth time, item number four should go away. And then with number five, back to what we've seen before, should pop up on the fifth click and stay up. So let's see an example of, of what that translates into. So here's our title slide. If I do one click, go to the next slide, one more click, I get to this itemized list. And notice only item number one is appearing because I've only clicked one time. If I click a second time, I get item number two and notice that item number one stays up. Click a third time, one and two stay up and number three appears. Fourth time, item number four appears and one, two, and three stay up. And then if I click a fifth time, number five appears, number four goes away, and one, two, and three stay up. So you can use this type of code to control when various items in your bulleted list appear. If you want to keep a particularly important bullet item up for the entire time, you would want to use code like this. But if you want some of it to go away, you use code like this. Okay, now let's talk about figures. Figures work exactly the same in Beamer as they did in Article. So I've got a section called figures and creating another subsection here, starting the frame, and then I'm entering the code to do the figure. It's the begin figure and end figure command just as we've seen it, include graphics command just as we've seen it, and caption and label just as we've seen it. In fact, you can typically copy the code used to generate a figure in an article and paste it into a Beamer slide. So if you've got a paper that you're working on and you need to make slides from that paper, a lot of the code that you've already typed you can use in your presentation. So that's a, a nice way to save a little bit of time. Now one thing to keep in mind is sometimes you're going to have to adjust the scale command a little bit. Uh, sometimes the scale that you've set in the article class is not going to translate as well uh, to, the, to the Beamer slide. Maybe it'll be a little bit too big for example. So you may have to adjust the scale. And if we scroll through our slides here, here's an example. This is one of the example figures, and it gets put onto the slide. Now let's talk about using blocks. A block is a nice device that you can use in Beamer to set particular text apart and, and to emphasize it. So. The way we uh, use a block is with the block environment. So I'm going to type begin block and end block. And then in a second set of curly braces after begin block, you're going to want to type the title of the block. And we'll see exactly what that looks like in just a minute. I'm going to call this block citations. Inside the block, I'm going to create a bulleted list where I've got a few citations. And this is just to show you that Citations with the NatBib package work exactly the same in Beamer as they did in the article class. And then I end the itemized environment, end the block, and the frame, and we can look at what that looks like. 
So here's the block. Notice that it, it stands out. The title is called Citations. That goes right here. On the first click, only this first bulleted point shows. There's the second click and the third click. So I like to use blocks like this whenever I need to emphasize some bit of text because viewers will naturally focus on that block of text more than other normal text. And then finally, you can put in references to a Beamer slide, just like we've done with the article class. It does take a, a little bit of some additional code, and, and so I've got that code here. This block of code produces a slide with a references sheet. Notice you, you should recognize the bibliography style and bibliography command. That's exactly the same as when we were doing it with the article class. Um, but notice also I've got begin script size and end script size, so I'm making the text smaller. That's usually helpful for fitting all of the citations onto one slide. And also this command right here, backslash def, backslash new block, that needs to be put in place right before bibliography style in order to get the bibliography to work. So what I would recommend is just copying and pasting this block of code at the very end of any Beamer presentation that you make and of course adjusting the bibliography style and bibliography as needed and that will always produce references inside your Beamer file and just to see what that looks like here is the uh, slide with our references so that is a brief introduction to using the Beamer document class. There are many more options and other things that you can do with Beamer beyond this, but this will get you started on creating a basic slideshow, and I encourage you to uh, look at additional resources to find those additional options for using Beamer.